We also have some Coral Pro Salt. I just put it down earlier because it's big. Now, I just want to, to mention a little bit about my history with uh, Red Sea Salt. Um, I think I first started using the Red Sea Salt uh, somewhere sometime in the late 90s. And I noticed that a lot of, there wasn't that many salts available on the market at the time. And a lot of them were really chemi chemically and very dry and kind of caustic. When you stuck your hand in, in it, it kind of burned. When you opened up the bag, it kind of burned your nose. What I noticed about the red sea salt is when I opened the bag, it smelled almost sweet. And, and so I don't know if that's an a artifact of how you produce it or what, what it's made of, but, but what is it about Coral, uh, Coral Pro Salt that's different? First of all, um, when you start, when you want to develop a salt mix, you need to bear in mind a few things. First of all, you need to understand the biogeochemistry of corals, which element should be in your salt, okay? You should also understand which elements are necessary for other, you know, uh, other animals in the system. Second, you need to find out with what raw materials you want to use and what uh, the qualities of the raw materials. The third thing is you need to know how to mix everything together in a combination that the moment you put it in water, it will, it will not precipitate, okay? One of the unique things with Coral Pro is, first of all, the source of raw material. The major component in any salt is the sodium chloride, okay? Our sodium chloride is the only is harvested from the Red Sea. The, in a unique process that we develop, okay, we managed to found the exact point in the process of the sodium chloride production where we can keep all the trace element on the sodium chloride crystal in the direct proportion that they are found in the Red Sea water. So, so your tagline is uh, the living reef harvested in every grain. What, what exactly does that mean? It means that in each grain of the salt, you will have the exact proportion of trace element, okay, that are found in the Red Sea. We also put other substances in the in the formulation, okay, like the calcium, the magnesium, potassium, and some of the minor and some trace element. But eventually, you'll get the most homo homogenized mixture. Uh, I think you can find on the market. In most of our elements, you have plus minus 2% deviation, which is almost pharmaceutical grade. This is our goal, to give you the most balanced and organized uh, mixture. So, so one thing that uh, I have noticed about the Red Sea uh, chemistry and nutritional philosophy is a, is a very big emphasis on ratios and keeping things in strong proportions. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about what that means for the Coral Pro Salt and um, what you describe as coral biogeochemistry? First of all, we need to understand that if the, we break the proportion Let's talk about the foundation element, the calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity. Everybody knows that corals need calcium and bicarbonate, okay, in order to build the aragonite. There are two forms, and, and this also relates to biogeochemistry. When you take calcium and carbonate, there are two major forms in nature, calcite and aragonite, okay. In order for the corals to uh, uh, to, to, to create, let's say, or to extract calcite, it is, mass, it is less energetic, okay? The formation of calcite, it's very easy. It, 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 very re it, it happens very rapidly when you increase the pH. In order to, to form... A so, so I, I know what you're trying to say. Calcite is a little bit more of a precipitate and aragonite is more of a crystal. And the, the, in order to create the formation of aragonite, you need the exact ratio of strontium and magnesium and barium to create the three dimension of uh, aragonite crystal. Okay? If you don't keep this balance, probably the coral will secrete calcite. Okay? And then you'll see that your coral skeleton is very fragile. Okay? Second thing, you need to keep the proportion in order to keep alkalinity, high alkalinity. If you don't have enough magnesium, 
all bicarbonate and carbonate will precipitate together with the calcium, especially where you are close to saturation. So I, I dive a lot and I see a lot of great reef tanks and I have noticed that sometimes people grow corals really fast, but the shape is not right. There's, there's some, they're missing the texture. Yes, you are technically growing the coral, but you're not really growing it naturally. It doesn't look great. and. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm all about the ratios to, to make sure the corals look good. You know, in the last few years, there's been an explosion of, of different reef salts available from just about every every type of aquarium company. You know, I think it's just a matter of time before the dog food company comes out with some salt. So, so what is it about Coral Pro that is still different today? With so many salts coming out, what is it? What is unique about Coral Pro? Um, I think that there aren't many, if any, formula on the market that give you the exact proportion of high elevated levels of calcium alkalinity and magnesium. I've seen some of the other brands, some of them will give you only high magnesium or high calcium and low alkalinity. Okay. There is a method okay, that you need to learn how to put everything together in the high proportion because if you take the amount of calcium and the amount of bicarbonate and the magnesium and you try to pull them together all together as supplements at the same time you'll get rapid precipitation of calcite okay now we need to provide a formula that will not precipitate immediately okay give the exact proportion of carb bicarbonate to the calcium and the magnesium we do not elevate our alkalinity with uh, you know boric acid or just bone compounds you get high carbonate alkalinity, high calcium without precipitation. And this is what's unique in Coral Pro. You can mix it and after half an hour, you are ready to go. Um, so that's another thing that I've noticed as uh, a lot of companies are trying to pitch their salts as being enriched and having these excessive levels higher than natural seawater of calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity. Um, so there's a, there's a common thread in the uh, philosophy of Red Sea, Red Sea's food, Red Sea's salts, Red Sea's uh, chemistry, and it's all about ratios, right? And so that carries through into the Coral Pro salt. Um, do you have any tips for, for people who are using this salt for the first time compared yes. to some others? Yes, of course. First thing to do is because of the high elevated levels of calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, you need to understand that when you mix the salt, first of all, I know it might be very simple. You add the salt to the water. Do not Actually, let's say that again. You add the salt to the water. Yes. You never add the water to the salt. Because you'll get a solution with very saturated uh, amounts of calcium and alkalinity, and they will precipitate. Furthermore, when you increase a rapid precipitation or cool, when the temperature rises above 24 degrees. So if you mix your salt, okay, try to mix it with a temperature between 20 to 23 degrees is enough. And only after it dissolves, increase the temperature to the level that you want. Uh, third thing is all the time test your water before you add them to the aquarium. We try to guarantee uh, every batch goes through quality control tests. We do use the most sophisticated equipment like ICP and all the automatic titration and every batch is measured at least twice before it's being released. But sometimes due to the shipment there is stratification of the salt. So first thing to do is shake a little bit the, uh, the bucket. Okay. The second thing is after you mix it measure the salinity precisely use a good refractometer or conductivity meter it is very so since the dawn of seawater mixes you know since the early days of uh, instant ocean uh, consistency and hom homogeneous mixes has been the name of the game it is possible to get all of the elements into one bucket or one bag but through transport they will settle out with the coarse materials on top and the fine materials on the bottom so if you're only mixing a, a part of a batch you really want to mix up your bag mix up your bucket before you add it to your vat yes but uh I, I, I'm not saying that you'll have all the calcium in the top and the magnesium right. in the bottom. You might have 
slightly higher differentiation up to let's say three to four percent and not the two percent that we guarantee okay just to make things clear. okay I, I think you're splitting hairs but that's because you're a scientist but it, uh, the other really important point I want to bring out is that uh, you know when it comes to keeping corals in an aquarium uh, marine life in an aquarium the two most three most important things are water salinity and temperature but salinity and temperature are the most overlooked parameters of our aquariums, and especially when it comes to salinity. A lot of people measure salinity by measuring specific gravity, gravity, which gets them into trouble. A lot of people will think they've mixed up their salt mix to a certain salinity, find that the salt is low, add extra salt, but in fact, they just didn't have enough salt mix to, to, to reach that proper salinity. And, and you guys have a really good refractometer in the market. I think it's the only one developed for for seawater use in aquariums at a tropical temperature is that correct yes what we worked a lot is to find the proper refraction index for seawater okay and not the brine or sodium chloride so just 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 to recap most refractometers are made for brine which is a mixture of purely sodium chloride it doesn't include anything else so seawater and salt water are not the same thing and this is really important when it comes to testing our water yes and we what we worked on is first of all we have the red sea in our facility so the i have the vast amount of water to test second we prepare salt mix so i can just you know adjust the proper refraction index to measure seawater and our salt to the level that give you a precise uh, measurement. I also have all the instrument, the other instrument, you know, very high and sophisticated conductivity meters, specific uh, refract refractometers, okay, to that helped me to develop the precise refractometer, a true seawater at 25 degrees. So the point is, if you're not sure that you're measuring salinity very accurately, you're probably not, and you need to spend more time and energy and effort making sure that you're accurately measuring salinity.